Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel. This is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello. Today we're going to talk about secondhand relationships, starting off in the book of Exodus. So grab your Bible and get ready to jump right in with us. excited as we get to take a journey through the Bible together. And as you're reading on your own, I encourage you to spend a good bit of your time, if not the majority of your time in the New Testament. But the Old Testament is full of amazing uh, principles, of amazing stories, and things that we can apply. In Exodus chapter 20, uh, we see the people do something that's a little strange. When the people saw they kind of they begin to see the wonder of God. They saw this thunder and lightning and sound as he came and smoke on top of the mountain when he came to meet with them. And the people were afraid. And they said to Moses, You speak to us, we will listen. Do not let God speak to us, lest we die. That must have been a real deep voice. <laughs> Thundering. Yeah, but when when you see this, they get this like, all right, we'll have a relationship with God via Moses. Yeah. And you're like, all right, so at first it doesn't seem bad. This idea almost comes out of the fear of the Lord that they want to do this. But when we set up relationship through somebody else, it becomes unstable. In fact, when you begin to fast forward in their, their story, uh, Moses agrees, Moses goes up on the mountain, talks to God, and in chapter 32 is some of the stupidest verses in the Bible. <laughs> that sounds so, like, blasphemous to say, <laughs> but I get it. <laughs> yeah, but, like, but check this out. So they have just seen God do wonders. God delivered them from Egypt through miraculous uh, works. They saw the ten plagues. The Israelites went through the middle of the Red Sea when it parted. Pharaoh followed, and the Red Sea collapsed over them. Like, the list of miracles now is is getting immense. Right. They have this encounter with God, and they're like, wow, God's so amazing. We need you to be a buffer between us. We're going to have a relationship with God through you. Moses goes on the mountain. It's been like 40 days. A month. Just over a month. <laughs> and this is, this is the people's response. They say to Aaron, uh, up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Make us gods. You do realize if you have to make it, it's not God. I know, like you're like just just pause and rewind and listen to yourself for a second. Like that's what you wish you could say. Like, oh, which I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but still, but still, it's so, so stupid. I'm going to go make a god to worship. Well, they're gonna give all of their gold for it to be made. And you're like, <laughs> then. The thing that you are about to make didn't exist before you made it. So it wasn't the thing that delivered you. Yeah. Anyhow, so that's why I think it's one of the stupidest, like, verses. Like, it's recording what happened, but I'm like... You should have let God keep talking to you face-to-face, even yeah. if it was scary. <laughs> I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. But it's really easy to see stupid when somebody else is doing it. Right? Um, but we can do it, too. And I, I remember uh, in college... I had, a, I had a friend, in fact, I met a girl, and I started spending time with this girl, and I got to know all of her friends, became friends, and through the course of time, things with that girl did not uh, continue. Ha uh-huh. <laughs> ha. <laughs> yes, blessing. I, I, way better off. But the relationships, the friendships that I had with her friends evaporated, though nothing changed between her friends and I but because their, our relationship was solely based on her, yep. it fell apart. So many Christians go about having a relationship with God via someone else. They go, oh, my relationship with God completely hinges on pastor so-and-so. And whether it's through Pastor Dwayne, Pastor Daniel, or just, um, I don't whoever. care, yeah. pastor whoever, evangelist whoever that's on the TV, on YouTube, that's at church. Um, when we replace encountering God for ourselves with it being through somebody else, our relationship with God then becomes fragile. Right. And 
has no depth. And if something happens to the person who is our, our bridge, then our rock with God falls apart. And that's not how it's supposed to be. And when we see this and recognize it, then we can go, all right, I need to spend time with God for me. Right. You need to spend time with God for you. And like, yeah. what I do isn't good enough for you. Right. Um, just as you can't pay someone to diet for you. Wouldn't that be nice? We go to the gym, please. Thank you. Yeah. I really need to get in shape. Can I just pay you for that? Like, it, it doesn't work that way. Right. And, and we often want our walk with God to work that way. We're like, hey, you spend time with him. I'll check in. Tell me what he said. Well, I've even heard of people doing that. Say, well, I go to church on Sunday to hear what God has to say. It's like, and, whoa, that's not a relationship with God. That's just hearing pastor's perspective and getting insight, which is good, but that is not a relationship with the Lord. Yeah, that's that should be part of it. Yeah. But not all of it. And I want to invite all of you to spend time with God daily. Like the whole yeah. point of these is to help encourage people to spend time with God daily, to help build a habit, to help yeah. equip people to spend time in the word, to help you get familiar with it and to learn how to get things out of the word. But if it replaces your own walk with God, then it's a fail. Yeah. And I want to invite you, if you don't have a daily routine of spending time with God, of getting in his word, of spending some time in prayer, I want to invite you to start that now. Yeah, that's how we develop that relationship and that friendship, just like we would with a spouse, with a friend, with anybody, taking time to get to know God by reading his word, by praying, and by just sitting there and saying, God, what do you have to say to me? And by listening. You know, the conversations go both ways. God wants to speak to you. God cares about you and loves you. You know, Proverbs tells us in chapter three, if we acknowledge God in all of our ways, that he will direct our path. So we need to acknowledge him while we're at work, when we're grocery shopping, and everything that we do, we just kind of, that's how you pray without ceasing, is you just always are inviting God and thinking of him and whatever you're doing throughout your day and giving him an opportunity to speak into it, to say, oh, turn left, yeah. talk to this person, say that. That's how he protects us, that's how he guards us, and how he guides us. Absolutely. Well, let's get into our confessions this morning. All right. Repeat after me. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I fix my eyes on God. I fix my eyes on God. And he fills me with his peace. He fills me with his peace. I resist the devil. I resist the and devil. He flees from me. He flees from me. My prayers are powerful and effective. My prayers are powerful and effective. No evil shall befall me. No evil shall befall me. Nor shall any plague. Nor shall any plague. Come near my dwelling. Come near my dwelling. For God shall give his angels charge over me. For God shall give his angels charge over me. To keep me in all of my ways. To keep me in all my ways. I take every thought captive. I take every thought captive. And make them obey God. And make them obey God. I fix my eyes on God. I fix my eyes on God. And he fills me with his peace. He fills me with his peace. God, I pray for each person that's joining us that they could know you for themselves, that they would have a revelation of who you are, of your great love for them, that you would open up their eyes to see wonderful things in your word, that you'd give them a revelation of who they are in Christ, of what you've given them in Christ, that they could walk by your spirit in, filled with grace and power to see your will done in their life. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We hope this encouraged you today. Could you please like, share, and subscribe? And as always, we invite you into God's word for yourself to discover who he is and what he has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.